We're strong. We're strong. Probably. Can we put that away? <laughs> <laughs> Today we got Jacques with us, who uh, is from South Africa, South Africa and went through the whole course with us. Really cool dude. Um, so yeah, Jacques, do you want to tell us a little bit about like your background and like why you did this and that sort of thing? All right. Well, as, as you guys know, I'm from South Africa. I'm 24 years old. Uh, my background, uh, like very suburban, very Western, even though coming from South Africa. So I had a very privileged upbringing, um, as a lot of white people do in South Africa, unfortunately. Um, so basically all I've been doing is just going to school, uh, finished high school, went straight into university and um, yeah, I've just been studying and obviously I got fed up with it. So I decided, you know, I need to, I need to do something else and get out of South Africa as well for many different reasons. Um, so I decided to come here and just try something entirely different and new. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So what, what is it that you got fed up with? Like South Africa, it's very, like you have to be very politically correct, man. Really? And the, like the corrupt government and shit like that. So in terms of political correctness, um, you know, being white and like shit like that, it's, you have to be very aware of what you say and it, like it's constantly around you, racism and you know, it's something that I hate very much and being, being surrounded by it on a daily basis, is, it's, it's uh, quite tiring, mm. it's exhausting. So. You, you hate being around the racist stuff, but yeah. also like the political correctness is just taken like so yeah, far. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. Like, other reasons would be crime as well. Uh, I'd like Where were you from in yeah, South Africa? Johannesburg. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like one of the, the biggest city in, in, in one of the biggest cities in South Africa. And so like the crime is also very tiring. Like this crime here as well, but it's it's different. Like for some places in South Africa, if you, if you walk down the street, you're like, you're not going to get home. Um, yeah, I've been victimized so many times I can't even count. Um, it's the whole kind of thing that you constantly need to be aware of what's going on around you just to try and stay safe. Um, so, I mean, I'm not being a very good ambassador for my country. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Um, but yeah, I'll get, I'll get to the positive elements. Right. So yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's not really bad, I mean. Yeah. Right, right. But before you get to the positive elements, yeah. what, what are some things that have happened? Uh, in, in terms of crime, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I've got quite a few. It's yeah. not. It's not a lot of fun stories. Yeah. Um, so, like one time, I was walking back home from varsity, like midday, midday. Like from like what? Like, from uh, university. Sorry. Oh, you like call it varsity. Varsity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you say far or var? Var. Varsity. Var varsity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't actually realize that that wasn't the thing. Um, I was walking home, and the sky just came up next to me very friendly that's usually how they do it like I figured yeah. out their approach like they all have the same approach kind of well most of them and he just started talking to me he's like yeah so my friend up there his phone got stolen and he's and like right now like signals are going off yeah I'm like, like oh, fuck okay yeah, here here we go right yeah. and so he's like show me your phone I want to see if, if you stole it and I'm like all right and I show him my phone like I keep it very tightly yeah, in my hand because yeah. I know what's gonna happen now and I put it back in my pocket and it was like because he said it was an iPhone so he was stupid I think he was on drugs he assumed that I would have an it, iPhone yeah. probably because I'm white yeah and um, it wasn't an iPhone so like and he just started going it's like no I know you stole it I know you stole it and then he started getting aggressive because I was just fed up I was like dude just fuck off leave me alone and he pulled out a gun and so like what he did was he put his arm around me and we were like busy street man like cars going by people walking by and he just kept on walking with me pressing the gun against my hip um, told me that yeah okay so I, you see there's a car over there on the corner um, get into that car and then we're gonna take it from there so I'm like oh fuck all right I'm, I'm in big trouble right um, so the guy left me and I kept on walking and I see this car and I'm like that there's no way I can get into this car. Like, yeah. You've got no idea what's going to happen then, and it's not going to be good. So I just chicken around across the road through traffic. Luckily, I got through without getting hit. And something which is beautifully ironic, I ran into a cemetery. Um, oh, shit. Because yeah, there was a cemetery like across the road. I ran into the cemetery, there were some security guards, and the car came and saw that I was like in the cemetery, gone security guards, and drove off. 
So I got away very, very lucky on that one. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, I've got another one. <laughs> you want to hear it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Let's go. Um, okay, so this one was my fault. So that's also a thing with crime. Uh, a lot of the time, you, you victimize yourself. Um, it's like, it's, it's a weird thing to say that it's your own fault that you were a victim of crime, but in South Africa, it happened. And you have to look at it that way. It's like, especially being drunk in the streets. Yeah. Um, so I like drinking and whatnot, so that happens quite a lot. So we went to the student town, uh, like we, what do we call like the Vegas of, you know, our city. Yeah. People just go there that don't study there because I've got a lot of friends that study there. So we usually go there just to get drunk, very cheap liquor and whatnot. And yeah, so I was, I was hanging out with my friends and I, I went on my own mission, like partying with other people. And then at some point, like I, it's very blurry because I was drunk and like sure. something traumatizing, you, you tend to like black out pretty quickly yeah and like at some point two guys approached me with a knife uh, and I was drunk so I was overconfident first of all I was drunk in the streets at like 3 a.m. and I didn't know where I was they I victimized myself very easily and so he pulled a knife on me and I was like yeah give me all your shit and I was overconfident I was like no I'm not gonna take this and I pushed the guy and I made a run for it <laughs> I couldn't run fast enough like, yeah. Yeah, and I was drunk so I fucking fell down either I fell down or he pushed me yeah. I'm not sure um, but I was on the floor and they gave me a beating to like, make sure that this guy knows that you don't run away just give your shit yeah. that's what I should have done I should have just you know, gave him my shit and walked away and um, yeah and then like I woke up I just, I just lay there for like I woke up the next morning not knowing where I am yeah, yeah. like my pants were down to my because I pulled off my pants trying to get the shit yeah, up. Yeah. So I woke up in the middle of nowhere. Like my pants are on my fucking ankles and I don't have any shit on me. So yeah. There's more but I don't yeah, think I, no, I don't want to mention all so of them. So they didn't like, like they didn't use the knife on Yeah, you so when shit. I was on the floor while they were taking my shit they just press it against your, your neck. Mm -hmm. Like it, it doesn't happen very often that you actually get hurt. But yeah. that was very close because I was stupid. Right. Usually you get hurt when you make a mistake, and that was a mistake. Yeah. So I got away with that one as well, even though they gave me a good beat. It's very but. interesting. You're like talking about like you victimize yourself. Yeah. Um, I think there's so many people that would. I mean, it, that's it's true. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Like, like you make yourself more available to be yeah. uh, taken advantage of. But I think you put that in like a U.S. like on a U.S. mindset, and I feel like it's much more like. It's it's the it's the criminal's fault. Yeah, it's exactly. Not yeah. your own. I mean, yeah. like of course, I guess maybe if you're wandering wandering around the ghetto in an American city, yeah. like it's sort of like the same thing. Yeah, exactly. But that's really interesting. So like when when tourists come to South Africa, like it, you're safe, man. You're safe if you know where to go. You're yeah. safe if you know where not to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very like easy to find out where not to go and where not to be. And if you have to go to those places, go with a local yeah. um, that know what's going on and how the street smart. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be street smart. Yeah. So tell us and about the good uh, things. About good things. Yeah, about Johannesburg. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. But like, Johannesburg is the, is the biggest man-made forest in the world. Man-made? Man-made forest. So yeah. what, what I mean by that is like um, planted trees. Right. So it's like a jungle, man. Yeah. It's like a concrete jungle. In the city? Jungle. In the city, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's like... If you go to like a mountain, there's not a lot of mountains in Johannesburg, it's pretty flat, but you do get them. And you look over the city, like you basically just see trees, but in between the trees are thousands of houses. That's and really buildings. interesting. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. So it's very, it's very beautiful. Um, that's Johannesburg. I mean, the culture is also great, very diverse, and I love that. Um, you've got 11 official languages. Yeah. So, I mean, it never gets boring in terms of, you know, culture. Like so you know yeah. more than one language, or how many languages do you know? Um, I, I am Afrikaans. Okay, so what is that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a derivative from Dutch. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's very similar to Dutch. Um, it's actually quite funny, it just came up now in my head. It's like a lot of Dutch people say that when, when you speak Afrikaans, it sounds like a child trying to speak Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can understand a little bit of Dutch. Like if you talk slowly, I can read it, um, but I can't speak it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Afrikaans is my, my home language. I don't could know you, how else to explain could it. Could you speak a little bit of Afrikaans yeah, for us? Um, I brought, I want to say a lot of filthy things now. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Um, I speak now Afrikaans so that you can hear how you it. It's a good for for the people, but it's not the best in the world. There you go. Yeah. 
very similar. To child that. speaking Dutch. Now yeah. you guys yeah, yeah, know yeah, what yeah. a child speaking yeah. Dutch sounds <laughs> like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if I can explain Afrikaans a little bit further, it's uh, like the culture. There's a culture associated with it. Um, very conservative. Um, not everyone. Like I come from a very liberal family, mm -hmm. but in general, Afrikaans is quite conservative. Like you generally have your farmers, Afrikaans speaking yep. white guys. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's like the part that got a mom and a dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. <concerned. laughs> one mom, one yeah. dad. Yeah. And like the apartheid government was <laughs> mostly run by Afrikaans men. Um, so I've got a little bit of white guilt yeah. associated with that as well. Um, yeah, so other than that, I can speak a little bit of German. Um, a bisschen? Yeah, so a bisschen. Um, like I can't speak a lot anymore because I don't have anyone to speak it to and you lose a language so quickly. Yeah, you do. Yeah, because I, I lived in Germany for three months when I was 16, like part of an exchange program. Um, and I'd had it as a subject in school. As for African languages, no. Unfortunately, no. I can't. Yeah. Like, I should. And, I, and I'm ashamed that I, that I haven't taken it up yet. I always kind of tell myself that, you know, when I have time, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll do, I'll do yeah. the effort. But you know how it goes with those kind of things. Right, yeah. totally, man. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, tell us, do, do you have, like, what did you do before this? What, uh, you know, do you have a family? Like no, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm part of a relatively big family. I've got uh, two brothers and one sister, mm -hmm. uh, and a mother and a father. I've been living at home my entire life before I came here. And, uh, yeah, I was just studying, man. Uh, I studied corporate communication. And then, so that's a three year in South Africa. You, your BA is mostly three years. I know it's different in the States. Yeah, it's four, yeah. It's four years, yeah. So in South Africa, at least in, in my case, I did a different degree, which is called an honors degree, which is usually the fourth year. And then you do your master's. And I did that in sociology. Okay. Yeah. So, and your I worked honors as or well. your yeah. master's in sociology? Sorry? Your honors or your master's? No, in so sociology. I did my honors. You need to do that, and then mm -hmm. you can do your master's. Yeah. Okay. Um, so while I was studying, I was also working as a, like a tutor. Uh, I was teaching at my university, like classes, like 30 students, and that was amazing. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed like teaching, but everything else was terrible. I fucking hated it. Like, <laughs> like what? Like I don't know, red like, tape and stuff? No, like marking, man. Like, I, like, like grading? Yeah, grading. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Some people uh, marking. Yeah. So, I mean, first, I did first years for two years, um, first year students. Like in, at the university level? At the university level, okay. yeah. And it's like a thousand students, it's a thousand first years, and we're like six tutors maybe. So it gets split up, like you do 200 essays, 200, <laughs> 2,000 essays that you need to mark in a week or grade in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just gets, it gets so daunting, man. You like, gotta be passionate, yeah. for sure. But like, after a while, you know, you just, you just get through it, man. And it's like, so that's the one negative part of doing that. But mm -hmm. other than that, like all the cliches about teaching are found to be true. It's very rewarding. Uh, you feel like you're giving back, you feel like you're teaching them. Basically, sociology is all just about critical thinking and helping people to think critically, like open-mindedly. Yeah, and totally. to actually see them starting to think that way, whereas they didn't at the start of the year. It's very, it's very rewarding. It's yeah. cool. And so I thought, you know, teaching in Vietnam, you know, it's, it's a good way to go about it because it's teaching as well, but I don't know. <laughs> Teaching children English is a little bit different than Definitely. teaching university students sociology, but yeah. And so why, like, wh why Vietnam? Like, where where did you hear about this? Why did you choose to come out here ultimately? I didn't actually put too much thought into it, to be honest. Um, I just heard people. I just heard that you're able to do it. Yeah. And you just need yeah. a degree, and and you need to do some online course. And so I was like, okay, well, let me look into that. Uh, I initially looked at um, Korea. Uh, I don't know why. I just that's just that's just my it's first the go. first where, place where I lived, and I was kind of set on it for a very long time. You know, I'm I'm going to South Korea. That's what I'm going to do. And then I found this course that we did, um, and I thought I'd just rather do that. And so I never thought I would come to Vietnam. Yeah. Like, that was totally. Yeah. I just I made that. I just got into this course, and I saw that you can do it in Vietnam for a month. And I thought that sounds nice. Like you can you can meet some people. You don't just get thrown in the deep end. Um, and then I looked at Vietnam and was like, oh, this place looks crazy, but you know, I want something crazy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I yeah. just, I just came up. Like, I, 
obviously teaching is a part of your your plan in, in the in the now. Yeah. And we're curious: is that part of your future? Where are you at in five years? Do you uh, think? That's a million dollar question. Yeah. 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 Uh, in five years, it's actually quite funny. It makes me think now. In school, I got into a lot of trouble. Um, that we had to like fill in the form, and I've had this, this exactly the same question: Where do you see yourself in five years? And mm. I just wrote dead. <laughs> <laughs> And I got called into the office, like trying to find out am I okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right at home. Yeah. I was like, no, man, I was just joking. Like, <laughs> anyway, so five years, I mean, it's impossible to say really. But <laughs> uh, well, you will be. Dead. Hopefully, hopefully, I'll be alive. Yeah. 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 Um, so going, I'm probably going to be back in South Africa. Like, I don't see myself doing this indefinitely. Um, teaching, for that, for that matter, it's like I wouldn't say teaching is my passion. Okay. Mm. This is more a means to an end. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to make money while living abroad and using that money to travel further. Uh, so when I get back to South Africa, I can either, I still need to make my mind up about that. I can either go to, you know, go back to university and further my studies and probably become a lecturer. There's not much else you can do with sociology, really. Yeah, yeah. There is, you can do research and, and like work for corporate companies as well. But what you mostly would do is become a lecturer. Um, I don't know about that because the grading, I don't like the grading, and I'm going to have to do a lot of grading if I go that route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, I would say my passion is music. Yeah. Like, oh. not not necessarily playing it. I have taken up some instruments and instruments in the past, but one also one of those things like I always feel like I don't have enough time to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, stuff like that. So, getting into the music industry, I just I just say that because I mean the happiest. My kind of rationale behind it is. Where I find myself as the happiest human being is at a live concert mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. a festival. That's where I'm the happiest person, and music just makes me extremely happy. It's yeah. like it's it's a medium of expression in so many ways. So have you thought about how you might make that a reality? Yeah. So like I've got a friend back home that's interested in the same kind of thing, and so basically I'm I've got no experience in the industry, so I'm gonna start from scratch, which is daunting, but you know you have to start somewhere. Uh, so I'll just try. And there's some online courses that I actually want to do while I'm here, like music and like Coursera. I don't know if you've heard yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do some courses, and then I'll just apply for like any kind of job I can get at like a recording studio. Um, I look at like live event bars. You have a lot of them in South Africa. Yeah. Music industry in South Africa is growing a lot, like the local music industry, not the getting international bands because we can't afford them. Yeah. Um, so it's booming at the moment, so I think it's a good time to get into that. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd probably just try and get work anywhere and get some experience yeah. and take it from there. But eventually, ideally, I would say, like, having my own recording studio. You know, what that made me think of was, I mean, it, it's sort of just in the realm of, like, you know, there's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, you talk about the music industry and, and how South Africa is, is sort of susceptible to, or it ha there's an opportunity there. And it's like, you look at Vietnam, and, you know, we've seen it with Ho Chi Minh. Um, we've uh, heard about it from locals, from, from expats about the potential that's here. And so it's like, I, I immediately went to, like, picture, like, a... Uh, like a huge EDM music festival like you have in like Belgium what, what's that one even called? Tomorrowland uh, Tomorrowland Tomorrow Tomorrow that's yeah. huge and I, I mean yeah. I would of love course, to go that, of go course to that it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be that but you know the adventurous type of person loves to come to Vietnam yeah. so it's like you could totally get some EDM music festival they love EDM here too. You, they do <laughs> yeah. Alan Walker Alan Walker <laughs> kids the first time they heard him say yeah, so I always write on the board, I write Mr. Walker, because, yeah. like, my last name is Robbins Thompson, and I don't think that, you know, that's a little, that's a little asking a little much out of yeah. that. So I write Mr. Walker, and they always, like, they're like, Alan Walker, and I'm like, who is that? What is, oh, is that? Is that, like, a DJ uh, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what's the song that, that they do? I'm faded. Faded is no one, but there's also, no. you know. I'm not alone. Yeah, I can't say that I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not doing justice. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know it either. Uh, they kept calling me that, and I was like, okay. And in one class period during the break, I looked him up and played him, and the kids were going crazy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so anyway, um, but yeah, I, I immediately looked at that. I was like, I could totally see some music festival being out here and people loving to come out to it because there's no. I've never heard of a music festival yeah, in, in Asia. It's a very good yeah. point that you're making. Like, 
I, I've tried to look up like what the music scene is like here. They love you, and, and uh, yeah. yeah. So not my favorite type of music. Yeah. If, yeah, I I had, if I've had enough, then it just becomes my favorite type of music. Yeah. yeah. Drunk enough. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, but that's the case with everyone, I think. Um, but I also yeah. th- that's just sort of the point I wanted to raise because it made me think about it. Was like. Um, if you think that your market's saturated wherever you're living, you know, I could never make that work. Like the world's such a big place, yeah. and, and if you if you are willing to step a, uh, one step away from what you define as a first world country, I think you can make a lot of your dreams come true. Yeah, through. take what's working somewhere else and just put it somewhere. Put put it somewhere it's not. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a very good point. I'm gonna keep that in mind, man. Totally. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. start like the biggest music festival. Hey, I'll be home, I'm your partner, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, Cheers with, with that, your water yeah. basin. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll think about like getting you free tickets. For the probably costs like, like a thousand. <laughs> maybe like yeah. Yeah. a thousand dollars in startup, <laughs> and you can probably make that work. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, so you're looking at a guy who's got a business degree. Well, you're looking yeah. at three business degrees, yeah. right? Okay. I see. I see opportunities there. So what about like uh, growing up? Was uh, besides like enjoying music and listening to music? Was there anything uh, like? Do you have a, a history with it? Uh, and there like, history with music? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's actually quite funny because my family is very musically orientated. So um, like both my brothers and my sister can like my sister is brilliant at piano. Both yeah. my brothers are also brilliant at piano and guitar as well. And me stupidly, like I'm so I'm so mad at myself for yeah. being in this position. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do everything that my siblings are yeah. doing. Yeah. And so I went the I went the like sporting route. Okay. I did a lot of sport, whereas they didn't. Because um, I just I don't know. I took up the flute. My parents were just like, do oh, something. That bad. Oh, yeah. Yes. The flute is so. Cool. And actually, I actually remember how that went down because I wasn't interested. Because I didn't want to do music. I wanted to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I told my mother that if she bought me like a like a packet of uh, I think it was like Pokemon cards. Yeah. Then then I'll play the flute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That Massive was my that was my incentive. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so obviously that didn't last too long because I hated it <laughs> and my teacher hated me because I mean you I hated the instrument yeah, yeah, and then so. yeah. Yeah. Um, so funny. Yeah. So <laughs> I actually very recently started playing drums, but that also is very difficult. Yeah. Like, it makes too much noise. Yeah. Pissing everyone off around yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Like, yeah. We've got a recording studio at my house, um, so a friend of mine started his own recording studio and it's on our property. So that's also I got some um, influence there as well. And there's a sound room, but it's like man, like it's homemade. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not properly soundproofed. So I mean, a lot of sounds will get through. Um, but the music, where it comes from, how I got into it, I don't know. Um, just being with a very musically oriented. Yeah. Oh, totally yeah. being surrounded by. It, yeah. Are you the youngest? Yeah. yeah. So, my brothers, I mean, their music taste kind of just, it grew on me as well. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. like being around them, listening to the kind of music that they listen to. And I, then I kind of went my own route in terms of different genres as well. Um, so music has just always been my passion. It's the only passion that I've ever had. Like I always, I kind of always feel like I've never had passion for anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's, it's very pessimistic viewpoint. Yeah, like, yeah. If you talk to any of my friends, I'm very pessimistic and negative and whatnot, and I always say no. I'm a realist. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like fine line between pessimism and realism. But um, yeah, I actually forgot the point that I was trying to get to. It's funny. Yeah. I, for you. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that from yeah. so many people in my life back in college. Like, if Carly has ever listened to this, I've I've made that argument. Stop being such a pessimist. I'm a realist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. <coughs> well, it's cool that like that's you've identified that as your passion. You're yeah. like, I'm gonna. It took it took very long. It. Like yeah. I was yeah. I was actually I hated the idea of passion to be honest. What and do you I'm, mean I'm by going that? very deep now, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I just felt like it's, it's a lie in a sense because I don't know. You get told that you have to find this passion, and I've never really known what that should be. What, yeah. what does it even mean to be passion? Like to just focus on one thing for the rest of your life, supposedly. Yeah. And I was just thought like that's a lie. How do you do that? That doesn't make sense to me. So do yeah. you is music really a passion for you, or are you just using that as you know lack I'm of a better yeah. word? Well, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm somewhere in between, man. But if I had to say, if I had to say that, if I had to pull out a passion, it would be that. Gotcha. That's, yeah. that's, that's the closest that I've come. To. And how old are you? I'm um, 24. 24. Yeah. Still, still young. Yeah. So we're I mean, still all trying to figure it out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think the thing that. I've come to, to realize and define over the past, you know, however many months, is that, and so many people say it, it's so hard to learn the lesson from other people, but 
um, life's so short, and it's like, why do, why try to do something that you're not truly, utterly like excited about? You yeah, know, yeah. Like, so like that once you once makes you get out of bed, yeah. and be excited about getting right. out of bed. Yeah, so that's a big thing. And so many people settle. So yeah. Many people, yeah. I just don't yeah. want that for anybody I know. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and that's yeah. that's part of the reason going back to like why I'm coming, to, like why yeah. I came. It's exactly that because I had a discussion like with one of my friends, a very good friend of mine, about he's also a very adventurous guy. He's always just all over the place. He's like he did an acting degree and then like later on you find him working on a yacht somewhere like in Africa and like yeah. he's just crazy. Like yeah, very yeah. adventurous, very adaptable. And I always found that very admirable about him and I always wanted to be the same. Mm -hmm. Just never had the opportunity. And we had this discussion about like he, he mentioned, he read somewhere that a, like a very large amount of people, like percentage of people live their entire lives within like a 10 kilometer radius. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. crazy yeah, and I, and I started well. thinking about my own life and I was like, holy shit, this is actually <laughs> happening to me right yeah. now because yeah. <coughs> I, I've been living in Johannesburg my entire life. My like primary school was like 600 meters away from my house, yeah. just up the road. My high school was just up the road from my primary school. Yeah. So I've just been walking to school my whole life. And then my university was like seven kilometers away from my house. Yeah. So literally when he said that, it was like, that is happening to me right now. And I need to get up because that's, that's not okay. Yeah. Like you, you can't live your entire life in just one area. That's, that's, they make me very anxious. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so speaking mm -hmm. on, on the end of like passions and whatnot, what's one thing you think that everyone in the world should do at least once in their lifetime? Shit. Apart from drugs? <laughs> I'm just, I'm drugs? just, I'm just joking. Drugs? Which one? I'm, I'm just joking. Um, let's, no, move, no. let's move on from that. <laughs> um, fuck, okay. So one thing that you should do at least once in your life. I don't know. I feel kind of like it's a cop out to say travel. Because I'm not well traveled at all. Yeah. Me either. Um, yeah. So this is the first time that I'm, I'm actually traveling properly. Yeah. And I think doing it alone as well. I think that's traveling alone yeah, is, is a very, like, that's a very good I think you learn a lot from that you learn a lot about yourself um, obviously I've only been doing this for a month and I'm try already like reaping the benefits yeah, yeah I can yeah. already feel different yeah. like and, and in a way that I can't really explain but I still I already feel something developing that I haven't felt mm. before yeah just you know going on your own mission it's a very it's a very like it's it's very anxious to just be like okay I'm gonna leave my country that I've been in my entire life and come to Vietnam on your own. Yeah. Like, I don't know anyone in this country. Like, yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen a familiar face since I've left. And as you know, as nervous as I can be and as like homesick you can get, I think it's the development that you get from that. It's, it's very cool. I'm only starting to feel it now and, and I'm, I'm gonna chase it for a while, definitely. That's great, yeah. man. And you look at us like, I feel like a pussy compared to you. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I come up with two of my best friends, yeah. you know, and it's so comfortable. And, I mean, to a certain extent, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, no, I definitely, I would love, and I've talked about, I, I, that we would love to travel by ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Way. for sure. Like, you, could, yeah, you guys can go in like different directions in Asia or whatever and just keep doing the business and like mm -hmm. get different perspectives at the same time. solo travel is important it's something that I've I've looked for and I've, I've, I've had like opportunities to get out but I've always had someone with me whether yeah, it's like a fellow American that I'm working with yeah. or something like that and so in that aspect I'm yeah. envious of you being able to come out yeah. and, and just do it completely yeah. alone yeah. I mean don't get me wrong I love being here with these guys yeah, and, yeah. I can imagine yeah. man coming out with two best friends I mean that must also be fucking amazing Either, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think the the common thread is like with these guys, I am so comfortable being exactly who I am, and we're out here where like it is us in a comfortable shell being who we are, but also like in this uncomfortable environment where yeah. we just we're growing. And I think you being the same way, like you're finding out exactly who you are. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's that's it's cool that you brought that up because. Yeah. At some, sometimes when I sit and think about it, it's like I don't actually know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I don't. There's, I don't have any like points of reference really. Yeah. yeah. To what I'm used to. So 
this is kind of this whole you know existential kind of thing of <laughs> finding yourself yeah. i would say also very cliche but make mistakes i'm very good at making mistakes yeah 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 that's um, a great and i always find good strength. that strength yeah <laughs> it's, it's an interesting strength like for example coming here I like i didn't know if this was going to be a mistake yeah uh, and just go for it and like making mistakes i'm very good at it and you get a lot of interesting experiences by making mistakes. Yeah. That, that at least I can say. I can, so the, some of the best stories that I have had, if you look at it, like technically it was a mistake, but it's so it's still fun. I mean, yeah. It depends what you, how do you define a mistake, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So what's a mistake that you've made that, uh, there's a, a quote that it, it goes, uh, you only learn from mistakes, but they don't have to be your mistakes. Yeah. So if you For could him. share with us like, uh, a mistake that you've made that you've learned from that you think is kind of unique and maybe right. we can learn from as well uh, I don't know if I have any unique ones yeah, it might be a tough yeah. yeah it's a tough question man. any mistake yeah. you made um, I'd say like a, a big mistake that I've made in, in my life in general is not is kind of to isolate myself and I, you know you get different kinds of people you get like introverted and extroverted I don't know which one I am really is I'm confused about it because sometimes I want to be alone. I don't want to have to do anything with anyone. And then other times it's like, you know, I'm dying. I'm lonely and shit like that, you know. And so one mistake with that is like I very easily kind of just remove myself from social circumstances. Even if we're around a big table and like everyone's having a conversation, I'll just keep quiet and listen to everyone else. Um, not because I don't want to be there. It's just sometimes it feels like I'm socially inept to actually contribute. Right. stupid things where like usually I'd be like I would actually like to bring this up but I'm not going to because I don't know how, how other people are going to take it yeah and you know being afraid of that kind of it, it, it holds you back in terms of socialization yeah know? I think that's that's a mistake I've made um, you know like not being able to small talk man I'm so bad at small talk and that's a, that's a skill that really can take you places yes yeah, and that's that's, that's one thing that I've realized and that I'm trying to work on as well it's just being more socially talented really right yeah. yeah no I can empathize with that a lot we were just talking about this the other night I definitely have made that mistake yeah. so many times of just like isolating myself and it's out of no like like I'm I'm capable I'm playing capable yeah. but you just kind of like get in your own head and it's just exactly, like yeah. uh, um, a question I wanted to ask when you're talking about like everyone should travel all that stuff and you know here we are traveling is uh, you know after it all and after you've you know worked your ass off for 30 years 40 years I mean work your ass off and lived I should emphasize that you're not just you know burning your head in a laptop um, where, where do you want to retire I want to retire yeah I don't know I'm fucking I don't know an island somewhere my own island <laughs> oh, yeah. ideally yeah <laughs> Um, Isolated like, island. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just funny that to talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Um, but to retire, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna be social when I'm fucking 80 years old. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my own island. I'm, like dream big, I guess. Yeah, so what do you do? Yeah. What does your retirement look like? Chilling, just listening to music. Okay. Yeah. And possibly drinking myself to death. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a lot of drugs. I mean, yeah. we're gonna die soon anyway. So <laughs> might as well go out and bang. A lot of women as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to grow too old. Like, so my retirement, if I if I be, if I get to the point, I don't know why I'm talking about You're this. Not I'm just going. Yeah. I mean, five years. Five years. Yeah. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Um, <laughs> so like, if if I get to the point where I can't look after myself anymore, then I'm not going to kill myself. Yeah. Like it sounds very hectic, but I'm, I'll go to a place where euthanasia is legal. Yeah. yeah. Just end it. There's that realism yeah. again. I'm not necessarily 
selfish keeping someone alive just because like you don't feel comfortable with yeah because you, you don't want to lose them but yeah. they're suffering so it is selfish but at the same time it's so complicated right it's, yeah. it's such a complicated situation yeah. it really is um since we're on the conversation of of uh death and whatnot <laughs> what is what is one thing you want to do before you die before i die yeah. um i'd like to see the entire world really if I if I if I'm you know if I get to the point where I make enough money to be able to see the entire world, I'll definitely do that and just experience every culture that I possibly can. Because uh, mm. it's like coming from a diverse country, it's I like different cultures a lot. Because you always find people that look so differently t- totally. as to what you're used yeah. to, and like they're d- totally different people. Like it's almost like they're from another planet, really. Mm. And so that's always interesting. And um, but something specifically, I want to do. I want to skydive, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to skydive. Oh, yeah. Like it's quite expensive, so maybe I could save up some money and go skydiving. I don't know if you can do that in Vietnam. You should be able to. I'm sure there's. Yeah. If not, it's probably isn't the place I'd do it. If not, <laughs> yeah, there's opportunity. There's another, another yeah, opportunity. Hey. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, if you found out that you were gonna die tomorrow, yeah. what would you do today? Uh, <laughs> probably lose my mind a little bit. Yeah. I guess anyone would. Um. I just spend time with friends and family, man. Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's, I, I can't imagine doing anything else, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, I won't go do something on my own. Um, I would, I think that would be kind of selfish as well. Um, but what I would, would want to do is just spend time with friends and family for like that day, if I only have the day. And just, you know, talk about the good life that I've had, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm also, this is. <coughs> Straight away from the death conversation now. Yeah, I think it's time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, kill so, the death conversation. <laughs> yeah, killing the death conversation yeah. for sure. Uh, but you know, you talked briefly about our apartheid and how you know your heritage was a part of that. Um, I'm really curious of two things, and I think a lot of people are curious. Is from your point of view as a South African, what was it like growing up in the remnants of apartheid? Has it made progress? Like, like, tell us a little bit about that situation. Yeah, so that's a sticky situation, yeah. for, for lack of a better word. Um, it's rough, man, because... And feel free to talk freely. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Um, so growing up, like, post-apartheid is... It's rough because you deal with a lot of white guilt. Well, not everyone does, but, like, I do, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel... If you go to an apartheid museum, Africa, it's like it's heartbreaking as fuck. Like it's it's really so bad that there's no way that I can't feel a little bit like responsible for it because I mean that's my family basically. Like yeah, you can yeah. trace mm-hmm. it back, mm-hmm. um, and it's in my blood, and like that wants me to get rid of all my blood. You know, um, it's difficult also in the sense that you know it's you never know really if what you're achieving is because you worked hard for it because we're so privileged. Like we, we still have so much white people now I'm speaking about in general in South Africa still carry a lot of the privilege over from that era. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's such a big gap between white wealth and, and black like poor um, environments. 
so it's it's difficult to to feel that you you got where you where you are on your own because it always feels like you, you're getting it from the apartheid and that's not a good feeling at all um so yeah i don't know otherwise the racism thing that I already brought up as well um post apartheid it's we we're not like anywhere close to equality yeah i guess essentially that's where we want to be like mm -hmm. coming from being a, a, like a democracy for like 22 years now and we still got such a long way to go yeah I like can't so imagine. If, if i bring america into into this yeah. kind of picture i mean america's been a democracy for more than 100 years 200 almost yeah yeah, yeah yeah so a very fucking long time yeah. it still has problems yeah. i mean like with race um and more like than 200. yeah and democracy it's it's actually i don't know if it's, it's a working concept um but that's a whole another debate um so t i mean 20 year two years like our democracy is still in its infancy really mm -hmm. um it's still got a <coughs> long way to go and like shit is have shit is going south in south africa right now as we speak because our president is is, is corrupt and like he makes just the worst like decisions he fired our uh, finance minister my deputy finance mi minister like a couple of days ago and like the exchange rate just dropped like within a week and we're now in junk status so shit is going shit is going pretty badly in south africa at the moment what was just that you said junk status what like that? that's an junk. like a junk so it's like an economic yeah. status yeah. of your country and your bonds are now yeah. junk rated. so yeah. like we're we're almost going below third world yeah so you know that's that's just <coughs> to give you an example of how far away we are from you know being a like equal society and yeah. the, the yeah. democracy really. and it's hard for me to picture what it's like there because you know like you said with America now there's still problems and, and there's been a very big push over the past two years about inequality um, and racism and so it's like I can't I really can't imagine when it's like 20 years into it yeah I, no. I mean that is like everyone's <laughs> also so confused really because no one knows how to deal with it because now like majority of our, our government is run by black people naturally I mean, 95% of South Africa is black. Yeah, yeah. And so now everyone's confused because now, like, it adds to the racism because now our president's black and our whole government's black and they're not doing a good job. So it must be, be because they're black. Yeah. Right? Almost like you yeah. can't criticize them. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's not that you can't criticize them. I mean, if you look at our president, it's not because he's black, it's because he's uneducated. Like, he didn't finish matric. He didn't finish high school. And he's our president. Like, you can go on YouTube right now and, and go look at a video of him trying to, like, say numbers. He can't. Like, if he had to say, like, any number in the millions, he can't say it. Really? Yeah. Like, he struggles to call out the number. Um, just to give an example, it's pretty funny as well to watch. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, it's a running joke in South Africa. Like, we have to laugh about these Jacob things. Jacob really. Zuma. Jacob right? Zuma, yeah. yeah. And I mean, he's been accused of rape as well. He's got like 700 counts of, of fraud and corruption against him. But it, he, he goes to court and it just gets postponed all the time. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the president. He can do the fuck he wants. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what. But at the end of the day, what I do is I try to kind of remove myself from being too involved with like political happenings yeah 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 because it gets so tired and everyone was always mm -hmm. talking about it like you know when you get drunk and you know conversations always end up in politics yeah a lot of the time and, yeah. and it's in like either politics or religion really and <laughs> always those kind of conversations you need to get out of it yeah. at some point because it can go south very quickly yeah. i was wondering how this was gonna go like i've never yeah. been interviewed in this way before yeah. like actually um what, a couple of days ago I went for my job interview it's the first job interview I've ever had in my life really yeah, yeah it's like kind of a big step I guess you can look at it um, well you yeah. got the job I got the job yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think they want to get people out there really because not a lot of people want to do that so what yeah. made you want to go out there it's uh, a good question man like I've been living in the city my entire life and I kind of want to get out of that because uh. I feel like here I mean the partying and the drinking it's a lot of fun and I love doing that but I don't want to do the same thing I've been doing at home. Right. Uh, so, I thought I came here to do something different, and now I just end up drinking all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, drinking is, it can it can get to you after a while. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I've been doing that for way too long. So I thought it's probably it might be a big mistake doing that because I don't know if I'd be able to deal with the isolation. Hey, I hear you're really yeah. good at making mistakes. Yeah. So <laughs> there we go. That, there's one coming for me right now. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah.
So, do you have any, um, <clears throat> like, lenses that you look at the world through, or philosophies, or, like, kind of values that you have, that right. whatever the situation, wherever you are, you always have and see the world through? Okay, so, yeah. Um, well, if, we, if we're going on to the religious route, let me just get that out of the yeah, way. So, I'm not, I'm not religious at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess that makes me an atheist, but I don't really like using that word. It's right. weird con connotations to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So non-religious. So in that sense, how I kind of look at it is that whatever you do and wherever you find the willpower to do whatever you want to do, it just comes from yourself, comes from the inside. Like how I look at it, um, you know, the power comes from inside, not from above. So yeah. that's kind of my way of my philosophy of, of looking at things. Um, yeah, just be realistic, and I feel like being realistic helps. Not have too many expectations. Like that's one thing that I've made mistakes as well of, of having expectations of things, and like thinking that this is, and that goes hand in hand with uh, like being positive as well, overly optimistic, optimism, and like I find being realistic helps me at least. It's not for everyone, but I would never look at a situation and be like, this is going to be great. This is going to be wonderful. I'm going to enjoy everything about it. I don't generally look at anything that way because I, I, I don't see the point in it really. I don't need that to, to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need that kind of um, thought process to get me going. Mm -hmm. I can, My thought process, what gets me going is just finding out. It's curiosity really. Yeah, yeah. Like finding out how it's going to be. Is it going to be shit? It's going to be good. Yeah. So curiosity, maybe that's my philosophy. Curiosity. curiosity. Yeah, I, and through some other things you said, I feel like we, we have some very similar philosophies as far as like you're very individualistic yeah. and it's like it's you who has the fault or you who has the yeah. success, you know, like the, it comes from within. It's not any of these outside yeah. factors or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't like the idea of relying on anything else right. Right. besides yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if you made a mistake, it's because you made the mistake. Right. It's not, if, and if something's going well, it's, it's because you're doing well. It's yeah. not because, you know, someone laid the path out there for you. Right. Yeah, I so agree with that. Yeah. I so agree with that. If you could be any movie character in any movie, who would you be and why? <laughs> the first thing that came to my head, and it's probably not the one that I'm going to settle with, is Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. <laughs> uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, I can't yeah. remember his name in, in the movie. But uh, obviously, Belford. 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 yeah, yeah, there we go. Don't obviously, when, when you get to the end of the movie, that changes very quickly. Like, yeah. to, if you go to, yeah. like, but even though now he's doing very well, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, that that just came to mind very quickly. I'm not gonna settle with that one, obviously, for many reasons, right? Other movie characters, shit, uh, that's a difficult one, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm hitting a blank on like, have I watched any movies in my life? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's just go with that one. Okay, fair with enough. Yeah. And uh, if there's a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? That's a, another one. Okay. Who would I want to play me? Uh, well, you never said why about Jordan Belfort. Yeah, why? Oh, why? 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 Okay, Why? Just because I'm stupid and it looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> it looks like, it, like having that kind of lifestyle for at least a while should be fun. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, okay. it's, it's, it's very um, questionable. Just a debaucherous spree. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of actor I would like to play So me? not yeah. Leo DiCaprio in uh, Blood Diamond? Oh shit, no. <laughs> like, I, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, I would love him funny. to play me, but not try a South African accent. <laughs> that, that didn't go too well, in my opinion. It was uh, pretty in, bad. In Blood Diamond. It's, it's not that it was bad, like, he pulled it off quite well. It's just so weird to listen to. Yeah. Because we, like, South Africa is not really in, in the big movie industry at all. So, as soon as you get an American or whoever trying to imitate a South African accent, it's a bit strange. Like, just, yeah. like even seeing anything about South Africa in movies, like it, it always hits you a little bit because you don't see it very often. Yeah. Like, South Africa is kind of removed from the the you know Hollywood kind Africa of picture. Yeah. Removed. Africa in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, I fucking love him. So yeah. I wouldn't mind him playing me. Just work on the accent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll help him out with that. Yeah. <laughs> and what's, so what's it like being a an African? You know, like I I mean like. It's I'm so not an hard. African man. I don't feel like one. Yeah. Well, th but it's yeah. such, still an interesting dynamic. You were from the continent of Africa. Yeah. And 
I don't. We don't know many people from Africa. No. Like, so if if you want like a proper African perspective, then I'm the wrong person to right. ask. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sad, but and and technically that's not the case because I'm African like all up, but being white and like having a very we ha I have a very Western life to answer that because yeah. like, I'm I'm very privileged and. So, I mean, I get to do with a lot of Africans on a daily basis, but I don't really feel African. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, my skin, I mean, I, like, I get burnt in the sun, like, in, like, 30 minutes, and I'm yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do you feel more European or more African? More, that, uh, yeah, okay. That's a good question. Yeah. Thank you for summing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I hate saying that I feel more European than I feel African. Because I mean that shouldn't be the case. But you do though, like just. I, I guess so, man. <clears throat> That's like, crazy. Yeah. So why? I mean, why do you hate it though? I mean, uh, like, what? It, why do I hate it? Like, why do you dislike saying that? Uh, it's just because it feels like I, I don't feel like a good African. Yeah. Really. I it, I, it feels like I am not where I'm where I'm from. Yeah. Really. Um, so it's it's a weird kind of way of of feeling because yeah. I've been living in that country my entire life, but it feels like I don't belong there. Yeah. And like a lot of like you know more extremist mm. Africans would agree with that like yeah. white people don't belong in South Africa I mean they got colonized by right. the UK and right. that's how white people got there and they just fucked everyone else's life up that was yeah. there to begin with white yeah. people are good at that yeah they're very yeah. good at that so I mean I, I don't like white people to be honest um, but I do feel very European okay. do you feel yeah. still like uh, in South Africa like you're still kind of like a, a colonization force that's stuck there and and isn't welcome and yeah it, yeah be there so sometimes i do sometimes i don't yeah it's like it, it all depends on like what's going on in the country because there's always shit going on shit going wrong and then some good stuff and it, it just it differs really it, it very often differs it's never set in stone like the, the way that you feel about that kind of shit if the president got impeached and they're like, we're gonna pick a random number and your number got called, <laughs> and you do like three, run. three things, I'd run. You would run away. I'd run away. Okay. Because, like, as as much as I'd say that the president of our country is doing a very bad job, I think taking his place is, is like would be the most difficult thing. Yeah. Like getting that country back on its feet, or just getting it on its feet and like running properly, it will. That's a man of task, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so much shit that still needs to be done, and everyone's, everyone like everyone's gonna criticize you. Doesn't matter what you do. Um, but if I if I were in that position, <laughs> let's say the current one had to do like one or two things that yeah. you said, what would you have them do? What would I have them do? See, yeah, that's, that's a hard question. I I, so I couldn't. It'd be tough like, for me yeah. to tell. Like, like if you, you think you about that with, me, with your own president, it'd be like, very tough to say Donald Trump. You need to do this. Yeah. And I, I mean, I could give you some things. Uh, some things come to mind, but... And it's funny if you... Because, like, people generally complain about their presidents. I don't know how you guys feel about Donald Trump. Um, we don't have to go into that conversation. No. Want, <laughs> but it's funny because you, you're always so quick to be like, he's such an idiot and then he shouldn't be doing that. But what should he be doing? Right. And it's very difficult to actually explain. Like, now that you ask that question, it's like, what? I don't know. What should he be doing? Yeah. Like, it's very difficult. And it kind of makes me feel bad now for talking down on my president but yeah you know. well thanks for giving us an insight into that yeah. I mean I think so many people don't I knew we don't didn't understand and still don't understand the situation in South Africa so that's very enlightening if you will um, well, I'm also not very politically educated so okay. yeah. I, I can't really like say much of value in, in, in that regard yeah no. you, you're still you can still have your opinion but yeah, yeah no that makes sense um, my next question for you uh, again a little more fun is and this is a uh, shout out to Tim Ferriss's question is uh, what what's your best purchase in the last six months ah, six <laughs> what, what's your best purchase in the last six months uh, best purchase you like, bought it you I'm use it all the time you bought it within the past six months could be anything okay it could be anything I'm trying to think of what I've been buying I don't really buy much shit really. it, could, um, it could have been a a great bottle of whiskey, it could yeah. have been a great restaurant meal. Yeah, something like under a hundred bucks or... Yeah. Cigarettes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, uh, I need my cigarettes, man. Um, and I buy that every day, so I, mean, I guess that would be the most obvious one. When did you start smoking? Oh, shit. Um, at a very young age, I, I, I don't like... It's very, it's very fucked up. But I started... Like six? 
<laughs> no, no, well, close, actually. But, so, I mean, I was a little shit, really. Uh, I, I just always wanted to do shit that I wasn't supposed to do. Yeah, and my friend, child syndrome. Yeah. Right and uh, I made friends with the same people with the same mentality as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, I started experimenting with cigarettes, like, when I was nine years old. Just like, I remember when I got caught, I was, like, ten or nine. That's crazy. And I had three packets of cigarettes on me when my yeah. parents caught me, and they were like, whoa, I got into so much shit. Yeah. Like, you're, you're finding a ten-year-old child with three packets of cigarettes, why would you even have three <laughs> packets of cigarettes? <laughs> and like, that's when they said, you're playing the flute. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go, yeah. Maybe that's actually what happened, but yeah. it makes more sense now. Oh, um, but, but actually smoking <laughs> properly every day, it was like, I guess, 13 years old. Yeah, that. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, like, if I have to look at these pictures, oh yeah, they're pretty brutal. Or, yeah. or like, maybe I'm gonna stop because it's fucking. It's gross. Yeah, yeah. It's so bad. I, like, I don't actually want to put it on a table. I'm gonna have a <laughs> cigarette while we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, to show it's like so here, yeah. um, the cigarette packs here, whether you can see it or not, is they're much more graphic about. Um, you know, like, like the warnings. Yeah, yeah, the warnings. This is what happens when you smoke. You don't see that in the US. You don't just much. see like smoking kills on it. You yeah, see, in South like, Africa as well. It's just yeah, got like it says smoking brutal. kills. Yeah. The Surgeon General warning in a nice white and black right. like, yeah. square that's visually. And who even cares what the Surgeon General says? What the hell does yeah. he do? Is he that all he does is just that little bit of copy. Yeah, he just makes sure Easy he goes. Job, man. Oh, is it still bad? Do we need to edit it? No, it's, yeah, good. No, it's, it's good. fine. Checks out. And has got a cush and job. you know whether whether it's here or there, it's all billable. Yeah, it's all billable. You ever thought about stopping? Yeah, for sure. I, I stopped for like one month, and I used even I even used poles to do that. And I kind of blame it on because I have to blame it on something because I'm a human, a flawed human being. Yeah. Because um, I that was I got out of high school and I went to university and I was living on campus and it was a very big change and like. Um, my girlfriend at the time was at another university, so that was also quite difficult, like in another town. Yeah. yeah. And so I stopped for a month because I was like, after school, I'm going to stop when I go to university. Yeah. That was my plan for yeah. quite a while. And obviously, shit got just too hectic, and like, you go to cigarettes when, when shit gets hard. Mm. Um, so I couldn't really stop. But I would like to at some point in my life. Um, I don't know, wait, probably when it's too late already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I had to make a, an assumption, but well, we'll see. I think it was Mark Twain, I could be wrong, but uh, he said quitting smoking is the easiest thing. I've yeah. done it hundreds of times. There we go, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, it's so cheap here, man. If it oh, wasn't, oh, yeah, that how doesn't much? Help. How much for a pay? Uh, so it's like 23,000. Like oh, hell yeah. 23,000 dung, so I don't a know buck. how many dung. A, yeah, a buck for a pack. Nothing, man. That's like, and if Imagine what you get for a carton. Like picture, yeah. you know, the bulk buy bulk discount, buys. bulk buys discount. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe I should just go to Australia because there you pay a shit ton. Yeah, of yeah. Cigarettes, uh, yeah. And, they, and they hate smoking. They're trying to get rid of it. Like people look down on you when you smoke and you can't smoke in most places. Like it's yeah. that's. I mean, that's very much. In Chicago, are the dudes like twelve bucks a pack? Yeah. So that's also that's it's in South Africa. Relative to that, it's also very cheap in South Africa. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's been. Um, definitely, well, it was a big shock to me when I left the U.S. Uh, because smoking is looked down upon. Mm. It, it is, and, and I think that the marketing that's been done on behalf of those campaigns has done a very good job of making sure that our generation isn't like super into it. Yeah. Um, it was very much not cool at a young age. Yeah, and, so, um, and smoking in general is actually going down. I just read that yeah. the other day because people are just becoming more aware of how bad it is. Yeah, yeah. and no. so, but when I went to Austria. Um, they call it, I, when I was there, they, people were calling it the ashtray of Europe. All right. And yeah. because, like, you could smoke anywhere. You could yeah. smoke in a bar, you could smoke here, you could smoke yeah. there. And it was so weird to see girls smoke. I was like, like look, there's really? some hot yeah. girl on the other side of the bar. I'm like, huh? Huh? <laughs> like, like, she's not attractive anymore. It was it was very weird, weird to get used yeah, to. Yeah, it's apparently quite a frown upon in, in Vietnam as well for, oh, for yeah? women to smoke. Yeah. Like, men... Like most men here smoke, yeah, like oh, it's yeah. totally fine. It's actually, I read that it's associated with professionalism, mm. and huh. like exchanging cigarettes as a way of greeting. You're and gonna fit in great. Yeah, yeah. Here, so man. when I read that, I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Hell, Cause, cause, like, Hell yeah. Like, I don't want to admit this, Korea. but but one of the first things I did is like when I made the decision to come here is to like check out the smoking circumstances. Like, oh, do they yeah. do they like it? Don't they like it? How much does it cost? So that's why I find that information. Yeah. 
women generally don't smoke here because it's frowned upon as well. You know, an interesting thing, so I haven't mentioned the marketing of cigarettes, and this is just a, something that I think is, as a marketer, it's, it's like evil and brilliant, is uh, in America back in, you know, I think it was the 70s, 80s, uh, when uh, it became illegal to have, uh, like, tobacco advertisements on TV. Oh, yeah. It was actually the tobacco industry that pushed for it to be illegal to have tobacco advertisements really? on TV yeah. because the law said that for every minute of pro tobacco like tobacco advertisements they had to do a free minute of anti tobacco advertisements oh, shit, so the yeah. tobacco industry was like ban it yeah. ban it and they pushed hard the lobbyists and and got it taken on so just yeah, the, but tobacco, major t tobacco industry is like, it's, it's they're very questionable work ethic that yeah, they have. Yeah, for sure. For sure, I just, I mean, that's that's one, uh, as a marketer, I was always afraid, like, my, my worst nightmare was uh, having to work for, like, a tobacco company yeah, or whatever. Sure. Yeah, for sure, And that just like, shows, you're, like... you're not doing good for the world by, by no, doing that. No, yeah. and that just shows, like, the, the cunningness and, the, like, the strategy and mm. the deceit. Yeah. But <laughs> what kind of person does it take? Ah, oh, we we've been in so deep into this. I don't want to talk about like what kind of person does it take to market a thing that you know it can kill, can and will yeah. kill the user. That would yeah. be very. I personally, morally, for me, it would be very yeah. tough. So I wonder what kind of person it takes to do that. Yeah, let's find out and interview them. And at the same time, though, I think like it's like. At the end of the day, it's your decision. At the end of the day, it is, but you're yeah. still well, well, telling safe, people, safe. hey, safe. please kill yourself. Yeah. Isn't that the same? Like, like it is your decision, but it's like, hey, this is a gun. You can kill yourself with it. Yeah. Please do it. Please kill yourself. But yeah. it's your like, choice. It's your but choice. It's your but choice, please but do it. This is it's so choice, but we rad. Millions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, we really need I, So I think it's still messed up. My kids up. are hungry. But at the same time, like, if they're going to smoke anyways, it's also kind of a... Uh, yeah. Kill yourself with our brand. If you're gonna kill yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. pay us to kill yeah. yourself. Yeah. Um, I th also, like if you're if you're very driven by money, I guess yeah. you can look you can look past it. Oh, you can yeah. you can look past anything if you're I if think, you just want to make money. Right? And I and I think and I hope that that's for a while, and then by the end of your life, if you live a life doing that, by the end you'll yeah. probably have a life full of like regret. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can I can only imagine that would be the case. So. Mm. I'm not sure though. We, yeah, we should sure. need someone who does that in interview. If you back in, maybe back in South Africa, maybe here, wherever, if you could put a billboard on the side of like the busiest fucking highway and it could say anything you wanted, what would it say? Um, calm down. <laughs> calm yeah. down. Calm down, yeah. Just yeah. Some people, I don't know, just relax. Yeah, take like it that. easy, yeah. I think generally you would find like on very busy roads people are freaking out because yeah. they need to be at their job they need to be wherever they whatever they want to do have to do not want to do yeah. um, like just some something to remind you to just calm down like you'll get there when you need to stop freaking out stop having the road rage right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> freaking out isn't going to get you there yeah faster. exactly yeah. so it's a, it's a funny thing like seeing because generally driving around in, in South Africa it's it's fine, but it's also it can get quite bad. Like the taxis in South Africa. If you ever hear something about South Africa, one of the first things that you hear about in terms of transportation is the taxis are fucking wild. Yeah. They just it's like big combi taxis. Like they can take about sixteen people, and they just do what mm. they want. Like they really just do what they want. So there's a lot of road rage in South Africa as well. People get like out of the cars and start hitting each other, and beating each other up, and it's always on YouTube because there's always someone filming it. Really? And in, in today's age, so if you see one of those like big like bus taxi things drive around, you just like stay away from it. Yeah, like, you're, like you're you're you automatically become much more aware of what's going on yeah. because you know this guy can just do whatever he wants to right now. Yeah. So you keep your distance. I've, I've I've driven in them as well just for the experience. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's it was it's quite interesting. Like you have to do it. I feel, um, especially if you're if you're South African. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very dangerous. So. So then, right off of that, in South Africa, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen? Yeah. Like, what's the, you've got to have seen something just yeah, weird. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's just like the Afri South Africans have a different way of doing things, like, in general. So, I mean, the craziest thing that you that you most generally would see is, like, people are very aggressive, man. Like, he, Afrikaans people as well. So, I mean, 
Pura. That's what we call them. Okay, so that's like a farmer. Yeah. And uh, Afrikaans white people are associated with farmers because that's what they do in South Africa. And like what do drink they farm? Sorry? What do they farm? Um, well, I mean, anything from fucking trees to animals, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, like, all oh, across the spectrum. The, the entire okay. agricultural spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so, I mean, South Africans <coughs> are very aggressive, man. So, like, you see a lot of bar fights, and you, you can piss off an Afrikaans guy very easily. So, like, and they're usually quite big as well, and they're, you know, very muscular. You don't, you don't want to fuck with them, really. And so I've been in a couple of... Um, I wouldn't call it a fight because I just get beaten up. Because <laughs> I, I, I tend to say the wrong things to the wrong people when I get too comfortable and then I offend people. And they're easily offended, so then, like, a lot of fights, man. Like, South Africans are very aggressive. Yeah, that's also one thing I don't like about it. Um, but something specifically, the craziest thing that I've seen, I'm hitting a blank on that. Yeah. You don't seem like a super aggressive dude. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not at all. Yeah. It's just I, I get into like these kind of situations because I say the wrong thing. Yeah. yeah. You like I, d- I, d- I don't always keep yeah. in mind that, you know, like political correctness goes to that as well. And, you know, I don't always keep in mind that what I say and how I say it might be taken the wrong way to the person that I'm talking to. And just generally shit I shouldn't be saying to people. <laughs> Yeah. It, being too too um, is it a thing candid, where, really? where you don't think about it or it's just like you know if someone gets offended by this thing you're saying it's like I just don't like you. I don't like beating around the bush man yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. boring really so if it ends if it escalates then that's exciting in a way I guess <laughs> <laughs> at least like, that made my day a little bit more eventful yeah. uh, I don't like beating around the bush too much uh, and that that got me into a couple of st- sticky situations yeah let's get that quickly um, so then, uh, if you could tell your 20 year old self anything, I mean, so you're just out of, here we go, we're just out of your secondary school. Yeah. Considering varsity. Varsity? <laughs> yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah. You got so you said vocab. Yeah. Uh, I think my GoPro might have died. It's all good. We got the audio. Heck it, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got the audio still. So. Whatever. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> what would you tell your 20 year old self? If you, have one, if, you, if you could say one thing. One thing. Stop hating yourself. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty deep, but... Yeah. Um, Tell us about it. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, being realistic or rather pessimistic, yeah. I mean, being hard on yourself, like when things go wrong, in the same way I would say that my philosophy is, you know, to just go with the flow and take hits as they come. At, at the same time, you find yourself in positions where, like, you start blaming yourself and, you know, you start looking at yourself and you don't like the person that you see and you know you can get lost in that very quickly mm-hmm. and just I, w- I wish that I'm at a point now where I don't do it yeah, yeah. as much anymore but when I was 20 years old it was a little bit of a different story so yeah just general don't don't be too hard on yourself really yeah yeah, yeah I, I can empathize with that too like mm-hmm. I've, I've like there's been times in my life where it's like you just get in like a weird funk and it's so hard to get out of it and then before you know it you're almost just like you're seeing a totally skewed version of yourself that yeah. you're really not yeah and your and thoughts become poisonous man yes yeah. like you you don't even realize it but then you think back and you're like how, how, what actually happens in my head and when you start thinking about it, it's like so many of your thoughts are just not the type of shit you should be thinking about mm-hmm. and it, be- it becomes addictive it becomes like almost like your comfort zone is like beating yourself up really. mm. yeah. So that's definitely what I would. I'd probably beat myself up and be like, "Dude, fucking beating yourself yeah, up." Stop beating yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> like that's very weird, but you know. What is one like? Uh, you love music, so what's one like artist? Oh yeah. That you think everybody should know about? Mm. Okay, so not everyone would necessarily enjoy it, but yeah. Uh, so, post rock is a genre that I really love. Post rock. Post rock. Okay, okay, so it's it's very ambient. It's generally doesn't have lyrics. So yeah. th- the band that I'm specifically want to see more than anything in this world is Explosions in the Sky. Oh, oh yeah. they're yeah. so good. Yeah. 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 So like that music to me is so just. So is that post rock? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. what that's what you call the genre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, they're great. So um, I'm, I'm yeah, into it. Great. I'm yeah. into your genre. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that music to me is just. I mean, you can do so much with that music. For me personally, it's like if you're having a bad time, that can help you. If you're having a good time, it, it helps you to have a good time. Yeah. If you're trying like, to be productive. Yeah. If you're it trying can to help be productive, you. I work on that shit and I use it. I listen to it when I need to make a decision, maybe. Like, yeah. 
when I remember actually on when I got on the flight, I like I planned this out. I was like, as soon as the fucking the, the airplane gets into the air, I'm gonna listen to this song from Explosions in the Sky, and it was the most liberating. Feeling. What song like, was wow. it? Um, so it was from the album. Uh, what's the album called? The The Earth Is Not a Cold Dead Place. Yes. Okay. Um, first breath after coma. Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> it's a great first song. First breath after coma. No, I agree um, with you. And like it's and I love the title even as well. Even though like they don't have lyrics, you can feel it. Yeah, like, like, like exactly you, like the title. You're taking your first breath after yeah. just being out of yeah, it. Exactly. Oh, it is. It's yeah. a very good title for the song. Yeah. They do a great Other job. than that, I have to go into metal as well because that's also one of my favorite genres. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gojira. Which is actually funny enough. That's, uh, I think it's Jap- like Mandarin Japanese for Godzilla. No, it's it's literally. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I remember that when yeah. you said Gojira, I was like, what's this that from? <laughs> and if you've seen Godzilla <laughs> from like the 2000 rendition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've, I've heard about and that. There's that, that Chinese that fishing dude. ship. Yeah. And he's like, and there's like waving a candle in front of his eyes. Like, what did you see? And he's like, Gojira. Yeah. Gojira. There you go. And I know. Yeah. <laughs> I just. Me and yeah. my brothers always made jokes about that. I'm still so yeah. yeah, no, it's all good. Now. Yeah, because so initially they were called Godzilla, but due to copyright and shit like that, they had to Godzilla. change it. So they just changed it to Godzilla. Uh, it's a metal band <laughs> that's from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one way of doing it. That's hilarious. Man. Uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a metal band from France. Okay. But also like, it's like an environmentally conscious metal band. Huh. So huh. the lyrics are very good. Um, actually, funny thing is like the, how I got into metal. And I fucking love the genre more than anything else. I mean, uh, is through Christian metal actually. Christian yeah. metal. Yeah. So that, there's, there's a genre. There's a religious guy. Yeah. So well, at the time, it's a funny story because I kind of I wasn't religious and I started listening to this music and it just blew me. Like the lyrics were it's very deep and it's very dark, but at, at the same time it can also be uplifting and it's gospel. Yeah. Um, so I started listening to that and I started feeling like okay, wait, there is a God. And I'm gonna I'm gonna become religious now and whatnot and that so I went on that train for like six months and then I realized no, okay, I'm not religious anymore. But I still listen to the music as well. Yeah. yeah it's, that's just how I got into it. Uh, I don't know why I started talking about that, but um so yeah, you like metal. Christian like metal is not always, you know, dark and gloomy and, and mm-hmm. you know, fucking aggressive and satanistic and shit like that. Right. So Gorgera is an example of a band that you know that they, they stand beside b- behind something like and that's environmentally being environmentally mm-hmm. conscious so wow that's so that Gorgera explosions in the sky two bands that I okay. definitely have to see before I die like if I get to the point where I have enough money I would literally go to another country just to go watch them yeah, totally. yeah. Gorgera cool best metal band in the world yeah I'll I say yeah. that without worrying about anything else yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will definitely check them out. Yeah. I will as well. Um, so, you've told us about some times that were terrifying by our definition. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, getting the a gun, gun pointed at you, breaking, you run oh, yeah. across chicken running across, across, the, yeah. across the street. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's intense, right? Yeah, but, that's very intense. Yeah. Um, so you get used to it, though. You get used <laughs> to it. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's terrible that I oh, say that. Oh, God. But okay. So, so ano- another example, actually, mm-hmm. is... Can like, I ask my question yeah. first? Because oh, yeah, maybe sure. this will... It's part of this, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Is tell me a t- about a time that you were the most scared you've ever been. So, the oh, most... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Most terrified is probably walking to that car. And yeah. trying to make yeah. a decision yeah. Yeah. of, like, am I getting into that car? Yeah. Because the amount of things that run through your head as to what could possibly happen now yeah. if you get into that car so is just so things. overwhelming. Yeah. Like, I almost passed out, really. Yeah. Like, I, it felt like my heart was beating so fast, I thought I was going to get a heart attack and just fucking fall down. Yeah. Because, like, after a while, it, it almost felt like I left my body. Yeah. I know that's a weird thing to say, but it's like, I couldn't cope with the circumstances. It was just so, so much fear, and it, like, that I had to deal with in that moment. Yeah. And I just started running across the road. Um, so that definitely probably is the, the most scared I've ever been in my life. Did you tell like your your parents about that? Oh yeah. yeah. So so when I got into the cemetery, I called my brother to come pick me up. Yeah. And you know, and and we opened a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you go to the police station, but because I was telling my brother like there's no point going to the police station really because they're not going to do anything, and it's it's always the case every every time that my phone's been stolen or I've been mugged. Uh, every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, How many times? 
Yeah, if sure. you had to put a number on it. So being mugged or my phone being stolen? Like yeah. is it like both ish or yeah, whatever? Yeah, both. Whatever. Oh, whatever shit. I've, I've lost whatever. count, man. Yeah. Um, like, like your your phone gets stolen in, in many ways that you don't realize, like pickpocketing and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. And if you, if once again, if you're stupid and you leave your phone on a table, um, you shouldn't be doing that, and then it just disappears, man. It just like you 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 don't you could literally be on this table like this right now in the in like a bar or something, and you've got your table on the you you you've you got your phone on the table. You'd be having a conversation. And you know, not really looking at the table, and yeah. you look back at the table, and your phone's not there anymore, and you don't see it. Like you don't see them do it. Um, the one time, though, actually, a funny story. Um, we were in Cape Town, in a, like a kind of a shady area at a bar, and uh, all my friends were around the table, and the phone was on the table, and this guy just came to the table, took the phone, and started walking. And my one of my friends saw it, and he stood up, and he's like, "Dude, that guy just jacked your phone," and he obviously heard, it, and we all got up. And this fucking guy started running. Yeah, yeah. So what it ended up happening is like we all started running after him, and we were running down the streets and like just yelling, "Stop him! Stop him!" And people like from different bars started chasing after him as well. <laughs> it's like just this big fucking mob. group mob <laughs> of people <laughs> running after this one guy. <laughs> and so like eventually he, st- he started screaming, "I dropped it! I dropped it!" So he dropped it on the floor and he just we yeah, couldn't just catch him. Running. But I'm very happy we didn't catch him. Because that's, been that's, bad for that's him. no, it would have been bad for everyone. Because, yeah. like, when you, when you, when that sh- kind of shit happens, you you get you get aggressive and like it it comes out of nowhere yeah. and you can't control yourself. Yeah. And the mob mentality as well. Right. I don't want to think of what what would have happened if that guy got caught. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you think you had? Oh, we were like easily like 15, 20 people. <laughs> <right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People from other bars. Yeah. 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 Because the thing is, everyone knows what's happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's like, fuck it, let's go get that guy. Because I've also been in this situation. Yeah. 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 So there's a kind of unity, I guess, there as well. But uh, so you get in South Africa. How many, if you had to like put a general (laughs) number on it, like instances of like mugging or like theft or this and that? Uh, and let's go. Let's go simply like violent, not just violent, like you okay. were careless and somebody All right. swiped. So it. like, is there is a weapon involved, basically? Sure. Is that yeah. that yeah, yeah. violent? Yeah, Weapon or like force? All right. Uh, so I'm trying to think now. Like the fact that I have to think about it because it has happened so many yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, I will say that from our point. While you think, yeah. um, from our point of view, it's, it's very. Uh, this is very interesting to us, and like the whole phone on the table, and like you know, sh- shit's gonna get pickpocketed and stolen from you. We come from Iowa, and it's like, yeah. I'll just you know, you hey, doors we're, all, we're, we're all at yeah. the bar, like we're our phones are everywhere, like we don't care about anything because we trust everyone so much. Yeah. Um, but you know, our state, there's three million people in our state, yeah. so it's like, Five, I it's just it's. It knows three. Exactly. Yeah, we keep it's arguing. Nine. I will fact. We've said this multiple times. Yeah. I will fact check that right now. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah. Like, like five, ten. So violent, violent would be like about five or six. So, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've man. I've been lucky in that regard actually because, like I was I was somehow find a way to get away with it really. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shit. So I mean the one time the guy what they also like to do is they put a gun like in their like a holster or whatever yeah and they put their shirt over it and yeah. they just take your hand and let you touch it if yeah. it's in the street because they yeah. don't want to take out a gun in the middle of the street yeah. right and they just make you touch it and like that's kind of how they threaten you yeah. but like in, yeah. in, in, in that instance like they're not gonna fucking pull it out and shoot you yeah but see that's that is that's very true but at the same time it's like they do drugs man like there's a certain drug yeah. called um, tuck, which is tuck? like a street crystal meth like yeah. it fucks you up so it's you don't very, know what yeah, kind it's, of it's a very it's in. a very bad drug and like a lot of criminals use it when they when they're robbing people. It's like a way of I don't know, it's a way of them coping with what they need to do. Or getting the balls yeah, to do it. Yeah, getting the balls to do it, exactly. But then at the same time they're they're very edgy. Yeah. So if you do something wrong, they might just pull a trigger, they might just stab you. Mm. It's happened before. Mm. That's why the general thing is that if you get into a situation like that, just give all your shit. Yeah. Don't hesit don't <clears throat> Try and be brave or whatnot. Just give them your shit and walk away. I'll try. Um, so the one, the one time where this happened, and I was listening to earphones. Once again, a mistake. Something you shouldn't do. But I was like yeah. in my neighborhood, and it feels very safe, but it's not. Um, but I mean, if you've been living there for a very long time, it feels safe. 
So I was just walking to gym and I had my earphones in my, in my ears and I was listening to music from like an MP3 player. This was a while back. And there was a very old MP3 player. And thank God I left my phone at home. Yeah, yeah. And so I had the backpack and I, you know, I had the MP3 player in my pocket. And he obviously thought it was a phone. So he's like, give me your cell phone. And I tell him, dude, I don't have my cell phone. And he's like, he's point, he points to my pocket and, you know, the earphones. And I take out my MP3 player and I'm like, here, take it. Because he had a gun, so I was like, yeah. I'm just gonna give you my shit. And he didn't want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he gave it back to me. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, no. well, I was actually offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're, if you're gonna put me in this situation, at least fucking take something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you pull, I put, uh, yeah. You pull out a Zoom and he's <laughs> like, no, 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 dude, no. A Zoom. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I put it back in my pocket and he, and he was like, walk. And I was like, okay. All right, just another day in South Africa. I guess. That is so yeah. funny. Fuck, man. Do you have any embarrassing travel stories? Um, let, let me actually start with like what I did. I think it was yesterday, like the health check I needed to do. Yeah. Weirdest fucking experience of my <laughs> life, man. And like, so what happened is I got there, and obviously I'm worried because now I'm doing a full health check in, in Vietnam. People that don't speak English. I don't know what the hospital is going to look like, is it going to be clean or whatever, and it ended up being a pretty nice hospital, mm -hmm. having said that. And I got is it the a public or private? Because there's a difference. I'm not sure, really. Yeah. I, I, I can't say. Oh, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's like, it, it doesn't say private or public. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and I got there, and like they're just constantly taking me from one place to another place in the hospital, and they check everything. But So at the beginning, it was like a four-hour process. At the beginning, like they were talking, and they're talking to me, but obviously... A lot of the times I can't understand what they're saying because they're trying to speak English, but it's very bad English. So, somewhere I heard prostate. Like, <laughs> and I, I, I hadn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it, right? So, I wasn't thinking about I might be doing a prostate exam. <laughs> but I think subconsciously, like, I was worried about it. And, yeah. and my subconscious just made it clear to my conscience that, you know, prostate, it might happen. <laughs> and so I heard that and I was like, fuck, okay, so this might happen. <laughs> and so we go from one place to like draw blood and do a urine sample and then you go to another place to do x-rays then you go to another place to like they check my teeth and my eyes and every time i go to like the different section i'm like is this it is it, is <laughs> see this? a bucket of is, is it, yeah <laughs> and and yeah so the one place i looked at it was like i looked at the name and i looked at like the pictures on the walls and i was like fuck it this might be it <laughs> and I, and the I, name and the yeah, pictures of yeah, the walls. Yeah, like I don't know, just trying to make connections. Yeah, and, yeah. and I sit down and I look next to me and I see latex examination gloves. Oh, no. and I was like, "Fuck, okay, it's gonna happen." I start making peace with it. I'm like, "It's okay." <laughs> like, um, you know, it's probably good that you're getting your prostate checked. It's maybe it's time. <laughs> I was like, just don't think about it. Go to another place. Go to your happy place while it's happening, because I wasn't ready for that. And. I go and I sit down in the chair and it's this old Vietnamese guy and I knew he was going to be some old Vietnamese guy and he just like looked down my throat, looked in my ears and I left. Yeah. <laughs> so I went yeah. through all of this kind of torture yeah. Yeah, thinking yeah. that it's coming yeah. and it never happened. I was actually a little bit pissed off that it didn't happen. <laughs> I Same went, thing with I went like the MP3 player. Right. Yeah, fuck it, exactly. Like I went through all of that fucking torment and it didn't happen. You were at the door just begging for a prostate yeah. exam. <laughs> Wait, 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 as they're pushing you out yeah. <laughs> But yeah, also one of the things that they did is like, I was just, I have no idea what's going on. I lie in bed and I take off my shirt and they start put clamps around my arms and they start putting the, these things on my chest, like suction things and on my legs as well. And I just lie there for 10 minutes with like a beeping sound next to me. I've got no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's like such a weird feeling. Did yeah. you, what did it end up being? Um, so I, I, I spoke to someone else and he he thought that that might have been their way of, of like um, doing heart rate i think it's like a very old-fashioned way of like testing your heart rate yeah because um, the beeping sound well if it's an old-fashioned way of testing your heart rate you, I mean, you might as well yeah wouldn't it just sound a little bit yeah so I, yeah it's probably not that i don't know why the fuck they, they probably have never seen that in my life a medical equipment salesperson come in and go listen yeah listen, yeah listen, yeah, listen, listen, yeah. 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 Um, other than that so <laughs> A story that you guys know about already, um, but for the sake of this interview, I'll go through it again. Um, hopefully, this is the last time. But so, Boy Vien. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Boy Vien, okay. Um, Backpacker Street, crazy fucking place. We went out, it was St. Paddy's Day. Um, 
and then after a while like people went home but if if i start having a good time i don't i don't stop until like i literally can't anymore and i met a group of vietnamese people very friendly um i started hanging out with them they're like yeah okay let's show you around i was like i was so keen man having a group of cool Vietnamese guys showing me around the place, yeah, taking yeah. me to the places that they like to go to. Yeah, so cool. I was totally in, man. I couldn't say no. Yeah. And so we're having a good time. This was one guy who could speak the best English. And the rest of them, kind of, their English was, wasn't that great. Um, so most, most of the time I was speaking to him. And we were like, it's like f got to the point, it was like 3.30, like 4 o'clock, and we still drinking. And, you know, we went to like some club and we started dancing having a good time i'm just having a good time like i'm in fucking vietnam i have no idea what's going on i'm just yeah. having a good time and this guy pulls me on my arm and he takes me into a dark corner and he jumps me and he just starts like putting his tongue down my throat <laughs> so <laughs> yeah just so jumps you yeah man. he literally jumped me man and like he went at it he, he was very confident about it um, so I initially my reaction was quite aggressive because I mean fuck it came out of nowhere yeah like I wasn't expecting this at all like I thought he maybe just wanted to tell me something because it was too loud on the dance floor and yeah so I pushed him away and I was like dude what's going on what are you doing and he was confused because obviously I give off some kind of gay vibe <laughs> he was under the impression that my intentions were to get with him the whole time I don't know where that came from or where he got it from, but so I ended up feeling quite bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where it gets interesting. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I always think back at like the decisions that I make. And I'm making. But yeah, so I made out with him for like five or ten seconds. <laughs> My first homosexual experience in Vietnam. <laughs> um, like I don't know, it's it's a very weird thing. Like I'm not I'm not homosexual, but I'm also not homophobic. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I can yeah. I can say that, but I definitely now more than ever know that I'm not homosexual. Yeah, you like, know. Yeah. 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 I did not enjoy that at all. Yeah. Um, so you made out with him because you felt bad? Is I, it? I don't know. Yeah, and I don't know what to make of that. It's also yeah, four in the morning. Very you're fucking yeah. drinking. Yeah, you've been yeah. drunk. Like. Yeah, I was very drunk. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you have to bring that into consideration yeah, as well. Yeah, cultural thing, you don't want to make him lose Yeah, face. and he was so nice about it, man. Like, he was he was really a sweet guy, and I felt so bad. <laughs> yeah, like, such a sweet guy. Yeah, and so, yeah, I just went for it, man. I was like, fuck it, Vietnam. Let me, let me, <laughs> yeah. fuck it. Let me, let me make out with this guy. That is the funniest <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, I was like, okay, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. And yeah. actually, also, like, what happened after that, it's the first time I got on the back of a bike. I haven't gotten to, around to doing it yet. And so it's like, you know, half past four or five o'clock and the sun is just starting to get up. Mm. So I got in like a random bike that was just next to the road, which probably wasn't very wise. Because, <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I did it because yeah. I was drunk and I make decisions like that. Yeah. And I got in this bike and we were driving through Ho Chi Minh City for like 20 minutes and it was so amazing, man. It was like, I don't know how to explain it with the sun coming up and just yeah, cruising yeah. through the city. Totally. It wasn't busy, so like we could just cruise all the way home yeah, yeah. and forgetting about what just happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And just, you know, and it, that was most one of the like moments that I kind of I realized that this is amazing. I'm happy that I'm here. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Just cruising through the city for five o'clock in the morning with the sun coming up biggest smile on my face for like 20 minutes i must have looked like a total retard but yeah it was it was good just um, thinking about that guy yeah. you know with yeah. this big smile yeah. on face. <laughs> <laughs> no, i just imagine you that's yeah funny. so i mean a lot of shit crazy shit happens in this place and that's like that's also why i'm leaving tomorrow going to a more laid back and place. where are you going i'm going to like i'm pronouncing it wrong dong yeah. tap um, it's in the mekong delta yep so like very green, all the rivers, uh, it's isolated to definitely very different to the city. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to check that out. I don't know if it's a mistake or not, but as I've been saying, you know, I'm going to find out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So like, you, you know, you do some partying here. What, how are you going to fill that time? Like, what, what are you planning on so doing? So what I'm planning on doing is for the first time in my life, doing shit that I've always wanted to do, but Fuck not yeah. having time for it. Oh yeah, yeah like there's there's music so, stuff. Yeah, music stuff. Yeah. Like I'll even start playing the guitar. Yeah, um, so if cool, I can man. start doing yoga, yeah. um, eating better. Like I've got all these ideas. I don't know if yeah. it's gonna happen or not. It's one of those things, you know, that people go through. I'm gonna 
turn over a new leaf kind of new yeah. page type thing um, so I'm just gonna do shit that I've always wanted to do but I've never had the time to because yeah. I'm always either working and drinking and in between that you don't find time for it because right. I mean you know and it's you know there's something to be said for putting yourself in an environment yeah. where you can succeed in those things yeah for sure and I mean it's it's uh, I'm, I'm very stressed about it as well because I don't know how I'm gonna deal with it I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cope with that kind of isolation because I've never been in, in, in such an environment but at the same time it's gonna be a great I've place. never been there so I should probably do it yeah for, yeah. for like, only that reason true yeah. tell us about a time that you made you really felt like you made a difference and I feel like I already know the answer from our interview but I could be wrong yeah so yeah so what you're probably referring to is teaching yeah yeah, yeah, that's probably that's it. It. yeah so I mean other than that the teaching it really was the first time that I felt that I gave back to someone yeah like did something that helped other people other than that the small thing just helping people out in general um, so like in South Africa there's a, like what you see a lot is beggars and like they're everywhere yeah, so yeah. street corners they stand in the middle of the street and they sell shit and they're always there begging and they're like on their knees and like in this then they like literally on their knees like this for like hours and hours on end yeah, on the street and, and just the, like and so that's a that's a difficult one because you give them money what do they use it for they go buy alcohol they do you know buy glue because glue sniffing is a very big thing glue sniffing. yeah that's how they get by because it kind of takes away your need to eat yeah so oh. it's, it's a way of coping yeah it's very fucking sad mm -hmm. and it's like you give money to them and you feel better about yourself but at the same time you're not make really making a difference by doing that right so i can't use that as an example um but generally just being a nice person i guess helping yeah. helping yeah. out wherever you can other than that teaching yeah yeah, yeah. okay and then my last question for mm. you is tell me about a time in your life when you were the happiest you've ever been I th I'm thinking that it's, it's starting to become now, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if if Thank I to you. if I not to be so much in the present, um, happy. So it must be at some music festival, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like this is one music festival every year that is just so amazing. It's called Opi Kopi. Um, sounds cool. Where's yeah. that? Uh, it's like it's in northern. You obviously wouldn't know that, but uh, it's like in the, it's on a farm. So it's like a lot of dust. So it's it's hectic at the same time. But the thing about it is, everyone is literally just there to have a good time. You 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 don't have worries while you're there. Like your biggest worry is where am I gonna get my next drink? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, it's all about music. So everyone there generally is open-minded, right. laid back, and every everyone's just more accepting really. And so in that kind of environment, you you can only be happy really. And so I think the happiest times of my life were always at music festivals like that. I do want to say before uh, before we wrap it up that like I'm you know I'm happy you got your place and mm. like over in like the Mekong over by like Cambodia yeah. yeah but I am at the same time like kind of sad because it was really fun hanging out with yeah you yeah man. yeah but if it's if it's nice enough up. maybe you guys can come nice visit enough. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't tell yeah. you to come over just because I'm lonely yeah. <laughs> maybe I don't know we'll see. Great, well, I guess on that note, we appreciate you coming out. Oh, yeah, it's been a pleasure, um, man. I enjoyed it. We appreciate you, and, and Andy used the word the first time, because none of this is planned out. It yeah. Is. But Andy used the word the first time, thanks for being vulnerable and yes. open to sharing your stories. Yeah. It, it's it's absolutely awesome. And, yeah, we thank you from really the bottom of our hearts. It's super fun to do this. Oh, yeah, man. It's a pleasure. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Cool.